So having talked about humidity and a little bit about clouds, we're now going to talk about what causes the clouds and why we're going to, and one of the variety of reasons we end up seeing our clouds oftentimes with our lifting mechanisms. And so in this case, uh, to get us in the mood for uh, talking about this video, I'm going to actually give you kind of a choice. And there's many uh, artists out there that have written some sort of variation of a song that's called something like Lift Me Up, since we're going to be talking about various ways of lifting uh, our air up. So uh, essentially our song here can be Lift Me Up um, by any artist of your choice. Because again, there's many out there who've written some variation on that kind of title. Now, um, just a rev quick review. Um, we've already talked about humidity, our air stability as well. So our humidity, we talked about this example in a prior lesson and lecture, again, that decreasing in temperature, for example, with dew point, um, for our condensation and precipitation. So we're going to be talking more about that. And our also uh, our little reminder of our air stability, again, this referring to our tendency for an air parcel to remain in place or rise. And so, um, again, we had that essentially what we call an environmental lapse rate or the surrounding air uh, that is not in our air parcel. Um, and, you know, and how that's actually, that is how the rate at which that air temperature is changing. Again, that is what we term the environmental lapse rate versus, um, as we'll come to see in some, in this lesson, or really more in some future lessons and lectures when we talk about, uh, using the, well, either dry adiabatic lapse rate or saturated adiabatic lapse rate to determine uh, our air parcel stability. So, essentially, the dry adiabatic lapse rate for unsaturated air, or again, where our relative humidity is less than 100%, or our saturated air, uh, saturated lapse rate for where our relative humidity is equal to 100%. So, um, you know, really, what we're talking about here is that one of the main ways to form our precipitation is to have unstable air, or we can have a um, lifting mechanism that we, and we have four that we actually have shown here that can also be causes of lifting up that air um, and making it for it to rise within our atmosphere. So I'm going to walk through some of these and really some of these we've already been introduced to um, or kind of had concepts, concepts that help us understand them. So for example, the first example, our first lifting mechanism being convectional, convection lifting, this is tied to an air parcel being unstable because it has been heated and essentially is warmer than its surrounding air. So again, you think of an air parcel kind of parsed out in a box here or a bubble, whatever it may be, but again, we're simply defining what's in the parcel versus what is outside of the parcel. And that in this case, what is in our box, as we're showing here, is warmer than its surrounding environment. And so because of that is more buoyant, it is going to want to rise. And and so if, again, if that air is unstable, if, if we're having that cooling, you know, we're in, as the air rises and it's still, our, our parcel's air is remaining warmer than its surrounding uh, air, it's going to continue to rise and rise. Um, and oftentimes, especially once we get up and again, as that we have that rising, it cools, as that air cools, may reach a saturation point. We may see then the condensation um, and, and creation of our clouds as that air continues to rise and then possibly even precipitation from that. And so in this convection example, probably the best uh, place to look and go to is Florida, as um, we have a really great example with Florida uh, being our um, you know, the pan, the panhandle or peninsula of Florida kind of sticking out into the Atlantic Ocean or, you know, Gulf of Mexico. And really, so really being surrounded by very warm waters. And, um, so really, you know, we have a lot of evaporation occurring off of that. Um, and then an advection with winds moving that uh, very warm and now very moist or, you know, having a lot of vapor pressure, um, in that air, um, or, you know, some of the water vapor in that air over the peninsula. And then again, because of our land water heating differences, we have uh, the sun beating on the land uh, in during the day, heats it up much quicker than, of course, our water. And so now we have in uh, the chart, we have air that is much warmer than it's surrounding, that is going to rise, it's going to have that convection or you know, those convective cells. And of course, then as that air very then quickly rises, we'll end up having, uh, you know, as it rises, uh, with that laden with all that moisture, condensation of that, and then precipitation. So this is why if we zoom in here, as I've shown by our 
box. Here's an example from a NASA satellite. We get a lot of convective thunderstorms throughout much of the year in Florida, so you've got all these little pop-up clouds that we can see here. It often has a possibility to have some convective thunderstorms, so it's very frequent to have those in afternoons in Florida um, throughout much of the year. Now, another example um, to note that um, because our condensation and precipitation can occur um, if our air is forced to rise, the well, question is, well, what would force it to rise? One example is what we've already talked about, um, this convergent lifting, or actually our low pressure. Um, and that is to note, you know, keep that straight from our convection, just note that convergent, uh, when we're talking about this convergent, it's a low pressure that's usually occurring over relatively large scales, so hundreds to thousands of kilometers, you know, hundreds, at least hundreds of miles, if, you know, if not greater um, scales usually. Where convection, we're frequently talking about very more localized scales within a few miles to kilometers, um, and maybe, maybe tens of miles or kilometers at most, but um, really you know, much smaller in relative scale across the Earth's surface than our convergent lifting. So as we've seen, again, with our convergent and rising then of air, we've shown examples in our prior to this, something like this, again, on the left-hand side, where we have our low pressure, that warmer, and that air rising, in, versus our high pressure, our air is descending, and we have that cooler air, uh, or really air, air actually warming, as it, uh, of course, is descending and adiabatically warming. Um, and so we note um, you know, our differences here, but again, focusing on that low pressure um, with that um, convergent lifting. And so we've talked about this again, just to reemphasize with some examples, things like the intertidal kind of convergence zone, and kind of just to emphasize that, in fact, about that, as part of the broader circulation of some of our cells, like our Hadley cell, uh, mid latitude cell, and polar cells. So, that moves us then to you know, actually emphasizing that this, um, our, our convection, or excuse me, our, uh, our, we, um, with our, here, we just talked about, I'm totally mind blanking here, sorry, our convergent lifting, wow, our convergent lifting, um, you know, in Eugene, for example, there being much more rain um, that occurs in the winter in part because of this um, in our, our high and low pressure because we have our you know, with low pressure we can see in our GIF here. We can see that relatively high pressure dominates in the summer months. Um, really off of the, most, the west coast, as we see as we move into our winter months right now, as we can see in this animation, we have these bluer areas, um, those lower pressures, and that spawns off a lot into the western um, United States, Western North America, Northwestern part, and so that creates a lot of the precipitation to some extent that we receive in those winter months here in Eugene. Um, but it's just to note that another lifting mechanism is also important in helping generate uh, also even more rain in the Pacific Northwest, and this is one that um, we will continue to talk about in another lesson. I'm going to actually be breaking these into a few different lessons or lectures. Um, the third lifting mechanism being term our orographic lifting. So oros now in this case we're going to mountains because we're having our air move, you know, it simply can't move through the mountain at the same elevation, but must you know, essentially pass over it. And so we end up having that air being lifted. Once again, because as it goes up the mountain, it'll be cooling, um, can be kind of kind of have condensation and precipitation. Uh, and then we term this on that rising side, the windward side, whereas is when the air reaches the peak and then starts moving down that air then adiabatically warms, that sinking air, um, and we term this the leeward side, and often this is what uh, generates what we term the rain shadow effect, and really is what we see then when we go to our, uh, back to our, our a map we've seen before, this average annual precipitation in our state of Oregon, where we can see really based on the coast range here, you know, on the far west along the coast, you know, also within the Cascade Mountains just to the east, of course, of us, um, you know, we end up seeing these much higher precipitation values because, um, you know, really we're going to be having all that condensation coming out uh, in those high elevations. We're then on the eastern side of the Cascades and really into much of central and south, uh, south and southeastern Oregon, especially, you know, having much lower precipitation values because these are on, we term the rain shadow, or, you know, on the opposite side of those mountains. And so you can even see this, you know, just in the vegetation patterns. And here's another an example from NASA, uh, kind of an aerial uh, satellite imagery, you know, of the Pacific Northwest. You can see Washington up here, Oregon 
down here, and again we can see really where the Cascades, our Coast Range are. Um, and this being taken, I think, more in the summer month because we can see some some of the Willamette Valley looking relatively dry, almost kind of to some extent like much of the rest of eastern and central Oregon. Um, but really, you know, that vegetation being shown um, and being dictated and really and tied to those precipitation patterns. So again, we'll be talking more specifically about orographic uplift um, in another lecture.